Hello, everybody. So this is section 3.4, Motion in Space in Math 213. So we'll be talking about uh, projectiles and uh, objects and things uh, that are either flying in space or described on the plane. And of course, we'll be using vector valued functions and their derivatives. Uh, one of the applications, as you see from your homework and from this lecture, is the, uh, the, uh, the orbit of a, uh, an object that is uh, hit, such as a baseball, and thus this background. Okay, so let's get started on section 3.4. Okay, section 3.4 is about motion in space. And by space, of course, I mean either the plane, a two-dimensional uh, plane, or three-dimensional space. All right, so as usual, suppose that we have a vector valued function, all right? And so by now you know, and we normally use uh, three-dimensional uh, vector valued functions because that is more general than the two-dimensional one. And so this is, uh, this is a, um, the position function. So at every point T, which represents time, uh, X, Y, Z represents the three-dimensional coordinate, uh, the coordinates of um, this object, whether it's a projectile or, uh, a, you know, whatever, okay? Um, it's the uh, position function. And of course, you can think of these as, you know, parametric functions, if you like. All right, if you take the derivative, what do you get? Uh, yes, we've already talked about this. It is the velocity, it is tangent. And if you take the absolute value or the magnitude of the velocity, um, which is the magnitude of V, and that is called the speed, okay, we covered that as well. If you take the second derivative, which is a derivative of the velocity, and that's called the acceleration, right? So we talked about this also. So we take the derivative to get the velocity, take the second derivative to take, get the acceleration, right? So there are uh, problems in mathematics, not just in uh, calculus um, three, but in also in differential equations and other application areas. Um, the uh, IVP, what does it stand for? Uh, it is the initial value problems. And so um, these are the problems where they will give you the acceleration, for instance, Okay, and you're supposed to find the, so you're given this and, and you're going to um, retrieve or go back to find the uh, speed or the velocity. And then from there, you find the uh, position function. It's a fairly typical thing. Now it's called the, the uh, in, an initial value problem because um, the acceleration itself does not give you one specific velocity function, right? And that's clear because uh, unless you are given some some criterion, like the initial velocity, uh, you will not be able to figure out exactly which uh, velocity uh, function it is. Okay, and that's because of the, the uh, constant that comes in integration. And um, so that will help you find that. Right, so let's see, this <coughs> is given. Um, I should also write here what's given. Right, so V uh, of zero, that's the initial velocity often written as V naught, where the zero is the uh, subscript, um, right? And so that's given. And then if you are to, to integrate this, you get the position function up to a constant, okay? But again, this constant um, has to be determined if you wanna find a unique solution. So these two are the initial conditions. So these are given, okay? And so the idea is to, of course, take the antiderivative, which is the integration, uh, to get the uh, velocity and find the constants. And then you take the antiderivative or the integrate, integrate again to find your um, position function, okay? Let me uh, give you an example of this. Um, and of course, <clears throat> they can be any kind of motion. It doesn't have to be due to gravity, even though we will be talking specifically about the uh, uh, object flying due to, uh, with the uh, acceleration due to gravity. All right, so let's say uh, here is the acceleration that's given six sine two t, two cosine t, and one. 
Okay, and let's say this is um, position is given uh, meters per second. All right, so the well, I mean the position is given by something, and then the uh, velocity and acceleration are given by meters in seconds. And actually, because it's acceleration, it's meters per second per second. So it's meters per square second. All right, and uh, so let's say um, the initial velocity is given as negative three one zero. And the initial position is given as zero, zero, four. Okay. Every time you integrate, you have to have a constant because the, as you know, and the antiderivatives are a family of, you know, these functions. And to find the specific one, you have to have a condition. All right, so these will be a sort of a typical set of given conditions. And uh, now uh, we are to find VT, the velocity function and the position function. Okay, so that should be a pretty easy problem, right? Um, all right, let's go ahead and try this. Uh, let's see, first, to find the velocity function, we take the antiderivative of our acceleration function. And so what is that? Well, 2t, you can probably see this has to be three here. And to get the sine of 2t, you would have to have negative cosine of 2t, okay? So, uh, and again, every time I def uh, integrate uh, mentally, almost immediately I try to differentiate what I just wrote to make sure that I get you know, the function that I am integrating. So do I get it? Uh, cosine 2t will give you negative sine 2t times two. And so of course that is exactly what I have. So no problem here. Uh, two cosine t must have come from two sine t. That's the antiderivative. One must have come from t. Now this is without a constant or any constant, right? This time it's a constant vector. Let's call this uh, C1 because we'll have another one later. And so that is the, um, you know, the family of antiderivatives or family of functions that are the antiderivative of this acceleration. Okay, so um, Vt, uh, let's call this V0. Okay, so you know what that is because you're given this. And this is negative three cosine t. Oh, okay, let's plug in uh, t here. When plugging, when you plug in t is equal to zero here, this would be cosine of zero, which is negative three. Two times sine of zero is zero, and t is equal to zero means t is equal to zero. And so this, as we are given, is negative three, one, zero. That tells me then c1 is what? Zero, one, zero, right? Simply you just take this minus that, and that's going to give you the difference, which is c1. So now we have a specific one, okay, a unique function. And there's a unique solution when you have an initial value condition. So now we have a unique um, vector, which is the uh, vector value function, which is called the velocity. What is it? It's negative three cosine two t plus zero, and then two sine t plus one, that's this one here, and then plus t plus zero. Okay, so that's our initial, I mean, this is not, um, this is the specific vector, um, I mean, the velocity function that we are looking for. All right, now we try to find the position function by taking the antiderivative of this again. You notice here, this will give you negative three halves sine of 2t. Immediately, I'm, in my mind, mentally, I'm differentiating this. I know I will get cosine 2t times two and two and two will cancel, everything's fine here. This will give you negative two cosine of t, right? Because the derivative of cosine is negative sine of t. Now this one will give you one half t square plus some constant vector, which we, we are about to find. Uh, we will apply the initial, velo uh, initial condition again. If you plug in zero here and zero here and zero here, you will get zero, negative two, and zero plus C2 is equal to zero, zero, four, okay? And so that tells me C2 is equal to zero, two, four. Again, it's going to be zero, zero, four minus zero, negative two, uh, zero. All right, so do, are we done with this? Yeah, we are, okay? So the uh, here's the final answer. And again, this is the unique solution for this particular problem where the acceleration, initial velocity, and the initial position are given. R of t is equal to, what is it? Negative 
sine uh, three over two sine two t plus zero negative two cosine of t plus two and then one half t squared plus four okay so are we okay with this this is our final answer and it is the only answer for the position function right, by the way you can check this you can check um to see um you know hey uh what is um r prime which is a velocity you know make sure it's okay and then try to find v naught uh, that should be this thing here and uh, and then you try the acceleration and uh, you will see that everything works out so that is the correct answer all right now uh, let's say um, find the speed at t and give me a little uh, trick here uh, just to help you out all right let's say find the speed at t is equal to pi so this projectile or an object or maybe it's some sort of animal or something or maybe a part of a you know a complicated machine uh, whose position is determined by this okay and so um, how fast is this going when uh, time is pi which is you know like 3.14 seconds the answer is going to be in uh, meters per second right and so how do you do that well uh, you just find the velocity right that's the one that you need so um, by the way this is what you should probably should not do even though it's okay um, there is a purest way of doing this which is to find this the magnitude of this velocity in general for t any t so that when you plug in a particular t you can just you know find it by this formula the uh, problem with this is it could be very complicated like in this case it'll be nine cosine square t uh, two uh, cosine square of two t plus now remember this is two sine t plus one square plus t squared this is not terrible and then you just evaluate this as t is equal to pi so this is okay but many times okay, if you are given a number a very specific point try to find that value okay that's a lot easier so remember your v of pi is going to be negative three cosine of two pi two sine of pi plus one and then pi and one i mean the, the question is if you're asked for a specific you know uh, uh, quantity like the speed or the velocity or position at a particular point only then it's probably easier to plug in the number and then try to do the, the complicated calculations in this case uh, cosine of two pi okay that's one right so it's negative three and then this part is going to be two times zero which is zero uh, plus one and then pi uh, it's a lot easier to find then the speed at t is equal to pi is the square root of three square plus one square plus pi square otherwise known as square root of 10 square plus pi square if you take your calculator out you can go ahead and do this oh that is not true it's 10 plus pi square and so that's about 4.4575 and of course the um units are meter, uh, meters per second okay so you know exactly how fast this object is moving at the at the time when t is equal to pi all right so that's uh you know that's a um, uh, sort of a simple you know uh thing and i hope you can uh, uh, quite easily understand this all right now there's another thing oh by the way um there is a, a worksheet uh that is in the module for uh, section 3.4 the page the section 3.4 the page uh, has a, 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 a worksheet and i will be covering that most of that's already covered and then there's uh, one new item in the second page of it so we'll go over that after this part of the video but before we go to that, um, I want to uh, give you an example of a um, one specific type of motion, which is due to gravity. Right. So let me uh, go to that special application. And so this is motion. And uh, we'll just stick to R2 uh, due to gravity. And I mean gravity 
on Earth, and most specifically, gravity on Earth at sea level. Okay, and and that's because uh, we know the constant. Okay, you probably know the constant too. And here's a um, here is a setup for this. Okay, so let me set this up, and then um, I'll draw a picture, and then uh, explain this. All right, so here is the um, idea. Um, we are going to uh, uh, shoot a projectile up in the air, and it's going to come down. And the initial position, as you can see here, is x naught, y naught. Okay, and we're going to do the same kind of thing here, and we assume that we uh, that air resistance is negligible, so it says without air resistance. Resistance, right. and of course, this is you know uh, clearly not uh, in reality because in reality the air resistance plays a big big role uh, in any kind of a projectile motion, whether it's a you know baseball or a bullet or a cannonball or anything. You cannot calculate anything realistic with that uh, with um, negligent air resistance. Okay, but um, that's what we do first because if you can't solve this without air resistance. There is no way you can solve this with air resistance. Some of these uh, ones with the air resistance, questions with air resistance, you will be able to solve this uh, by using differential equations. But um, you know, again, this is the basic. You know, if you cannot do it without air resistance, you cannot do this with air resistance. So let's uh, try to solve this. Uh, what we are given is this. Right? So you are given this. Uh, let's see, v naught is given as x one y one. Okay, so that's the sort of assumption. And by the way, uh, we already know what this is. This is the um, initial velocity times cosine theta. Um, maybe I should write it down here. Okay, so this will be the initial velocity, the magnitude of it times cosine of theta. Of course, that's the x component. And if the y component is the one with the sine of theta, right? So you can rewrite x, y, and y, y that way. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and start this. And in fact, I think I'm going to pause this in just a bit, little bit and let you figure this out, the rest of this out. All right, the first thing you have to know is that if you assume there, uh, there's no air resistance, in the direction of x, the uh, speed doesn't change or the velocity in the x direction doesn't change. It just keeps going at the same rate, um, just like a linear action, all right? So there is no acceleration in the x direction. I mean, again, with the air resistance, certainly there's going to be some sort of a negative um, number here, uh, usually depends on t, but we ignore this at this point. And then the, um, the uh, Acceleration due to gravity is the force that's trying to put this down this way, right? And that's negative 32 uh, if you use feet per second square, right? And you know that if you're a, uh, if you're a, a user of the metric system, right, like the rest of the world is, then you use negative 9.8 meters per square second, okay? And this is the gravitational constant at sea level. All right, you don't have to know all that stuff. Uh, once you get started with this, then we can do exactly what we did in the first page and come up with this, right? So let's go ahead and, and um, you know, you can try to work this out and see if you can come up with uh, your R, the, uh, the expression for the uh, R, okay? All right, and so once you think you've found the expression for R of T, you can come back and look at the second part of this video.